So here's an overview. I don't need to, you know, but th this, this is fun, and you're all going to get a copy of this, all right? 300 neighborhoods in New York. You know, the population, the language is spoken. Look at that overview. Don't try to go to every restaurant in New York City. You'll, you'll, never, you'll never make it. <laughs> but here we go, and here are some older numbers, and giving you a snapshot of the economy in New York. And don't worry about this. This is, this is all going to be made available to you. And to your point is what has emerged here and what has been the importance of pace in this, quite frankly, is that growth and that, you know, of, of, of priming the pump of startup companies and startup act activities. And you're seeing it in, in a lot of places. And here are some of the, the evidence of homegrown success stories that we had not had in the past, right? Starts with capital, right? Capital access has to be there, but you have to start, pay, you have to pay attention to to the growth of these, these economies. Look at, the, look at the percentage, the growth of employment in high-tech jobs in New York, right? Here's the other piece. This is the one I love. This is, I, I love this piece. We have more students than Boston has people, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I love that, right? But look at that, 600, across, the, across that Brooklyn Bridge, in downtown Brooklyn, there's 60,000 college students. I was there yesterday. New York Tech, NYU, um, um, Columbia's not there, Pratt is there, <laughs> LIU, St. Francis College, right? St. Joseph's College, 60,000 right in that core. This is a great quote about New York and bouncing back. Time and time again, and, right? And here are some of the things that you, you saw in the case study. Um, that picture is former President Jimmy Carter walking along abandoned parts of the South Bronx. We had a President of the United States, you know, basically telling the city, I'm not bailing you out. The Daily News had other ways to say that. We don't have presidents that do this anymore in America, right? <laughs> right? But look how bad things were. And then there's a lot of people who were wondering, how did New York get it back? What was it? Well, the Yankees got better. Andy Warhol was, is, was uh, making a lot of headlines in arts. But what was, what was the reason for um, the growth again. And I think a lot of it was the entrepreneurship. And here's the key piece, and this is the part that I want to leave you with, and I want to walk you through this, is what we talked about time and time again and applies to a lot of other cities, is four foundations, four major pillars for economic development and, and growth. One being improving quality of life, the second, creating a pro-business environment. The third, innovation and economic transformation. And the fourth, making sure you're making investments in the future. Often what happens is mayors, leaders in government often want to skip this one. Right? They want to skip right that. They want to get right to innovation and economic transformation big mistake. When we talk about quality of life, what are we talking about? What issues? Education. Huh? Education. 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 Go ahead. And, and health. health. Go ahead. Help me. Housing. 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 What else? Security. Security, Security right? Yeah. Is it safe? Right? Is it safe? Is it clean? Can my kids be educated? Do I have a park to go to? These are some of the basic issues. I go out to neighborhoods now, and I still do this on a regular basis. I was out in Bed-Stuy this week. Are the streets clean? Do people feel safe? You know, whether it's reality or perception, focusing on making sure those things happen. 
right, in, in a city. If you don't get this one right, people are too smart. They'll, they'll get the others. You, 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 can't, you can't fake this. And we've seen that in a lot of cities. Uh, what a lot of cities end up doing is these campaigns, right? Mm -hmm. Come to my city and if it's not safe to walk the streets, if there's not a place to go to the park, if there's not a cultural institution, I ain't coming. Right? And these are these are these are key key pieces. These are the things that Mayor Bloomberg drilled in our heads as, as commissioners from an economic development standpoint. These four these four areas. And we'll start with quality of life. We covered most of them, right? All right, we talked about schools, public safety, clean streets, cultural institutions, parks, recreation, clean air and water, right? And what happened in New York City? I'm just gonna take one of them, the parks. What happened here in terms of open space? Look at the, look at the, the additions that were made over the last 15, 20 years. Certainly the waterfront, Brooklyn Bridge Park as we talked about, Governor's Island, anyone been to Governor's Island yet? Professor doesn't count. Been on this trip? Yeah. You gotta get these guys out. They, 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 they're, they're studying too much or they're hanging out in the bars. I'm not sure where, they, where it is. But we, we, got, we gotta get them out to Governor's Island and a couple of these other places. All right? We, we, we ended up at City Hall start talking about it as the sixth borough. 500 miles of waterfront. 500 miles of waterfront. For the most part, this was abandoned and empty. That whole shoreline, if you will, of Brooklyn and up into the, up into Queens. The ferry system, which is in the news again, right? Ferries, uh, uh, the current mayor, Mayor de Blasio, ended up growing this. But look at the numbers of people riding ferries to work and what that has done in terms of opening up neighborhoods that otherwise um, were not. It's really interesting, you look at those numbers below. 86% of American commuters drive to work. 86%! Less than a third of New Yorkers drive to work. Right? You're, gonna, you're seeing ridership other, other places. And, and here, obviously, is not the new, uh, th this is the fairly new proposal for the ferry service and how it's opening up even more neighborhoods. When you open it up and you make it more accessible, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna see even more growth. Uh, Brooklyn Army Terminal, where you guys were, you know, if, if there's greater access, um, it makes all the difference in the world. And I'll run through that. But ahead, Brooklyn Bridge Park, right? This is what it looked like, folks. It wasn't long, long ago. This is what it looked like. Go take a look at it today. This is what it looks like from an aerial view and growing. It's about 1.5 miles from this point up to here, so. But, it, but it's worth, worth the visit. And you can see it's all broken out. How, did, how was it funded? It was funded by adding um, hotel, residential, and de other developments along the way to, to, uh, to, me to make it happen. And here are some scenes that I thought you would be interested in. You, you can see I'm trying to lure all you to Brooklyn, right? <coughs> you know, from the carousel uh, to the open parks, uh, it, it, it's just fascinating. Governor's Island, another example. This is a this is was a former military base that was empty for the longest time. Got into a whole bunch of squabbles. The mayor, uh, Mayor Bloomberg, ended up um, you know, basically uh, uh, it for a getting getting. What did you say? Buying it for a dollar. Buying well, the federal government want to give it away. They didn't know what to do with it. It's not going to be a military base, and they had all all this infrastructure. They didn't know what to do with. And now it is an amenity. The High Line. Anybody been to the High Line? All right, a few more hands are coming up. What do you think? Do we like it? Right? What's that? Did, did you like it? Did you like the High Line? You know what I thought in the meetings? I thought it was a crazy idea. Yeah, I thought it was a crazy idea. I thought they should tear it down. I thought this was an old, that it only stood up by habit. Rip it down, open up the street to, to air. What are we doing, this crazy vertical park? Where, this isn't gonna have an impact. Thank God they didn't listen to me, right? 
But here's what we have, right? We had we had a whole debate taking place. Bruce will tell you this. A whole debate that took place. The people who thought, you know, it's it's unpleasant, it's dark, you walk under it, stands only by habit, you know, it's 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 awful. Right? We have an opportunity to create a new public promenade on top of this out, you know, elevator. This would provide much needed green space. To keep my job, I signed with this guy. All right? This guy, you know, you know, again, cities are about visions. It's about creativity. It's about taking chances. The mayor would often say to us, you know, throw stuff on the wall. Not everything is going to stick, but take chances. Be entrepreneurial. And here, that high line has led to so much growth. 4.8 million people, <clears throat> right? And space being built in. It became a catalyst for growth of that area. Union Square Park, where I, where I spent eight years. All right, anybody been up to the Green Market? Anyone going to be in the city this weekend? Raise your hands. OK? You're going to be in the city this weekend? You have plans? Yeah, you do. You're writing a presentation. You're writing a presentation? You're going to need a break, OK? All right? You get go, up to, go up and walk around the Union Square Green Market. You'll be joining tens of thousands of other people. It's one subway stop away. The renaissance there was pretty remarkable what took place. These are the headlines, not too long ago. Bums triumph. That's what the headline said, the local paper, city shuts down park. Because back, right, not too long ago, it was an unsafe place. Today, you're seeing a tremendous amount of growth. That's that green market that, that if, you know, if you go up there today, today's Thursday, Yes. Yeah, it doesn't exist. You're going to say, what the hell is he talking about? Right? It, it pops up on Fridays and Saturdays. It's really cool. All right? Take it from me. We, we built a lot of our parks through conservancies, and then you get on to the next issue on, on transformation. I'm going to run through this you know, pretty quickly because I'm going to run out of time. What do I have until 12? You have, yeah. you have all the time you want. <clears throat> okay? Um, <laughs> One of the things that we focused a lot on in this city was affordable housing and building affordable housing. Right? Mayor Bloomberg did it. Um, de Blasio, Mayor de Blasio, has been very aggressive in, in uh, laying out housing plans, and we're seeing it all throughout the city. <clears throat> Hudson Yards. This was another empty place with a lot of different plans. It was going to be the place where we were going to host the Olympics. It was going to be a place where Yankee Stadium was going to be built. It was going to be a place where the New York Jets were going to have a, a new stadium. Um, lots of ideas. Recently, um, related companies uh, not too long ago struck a deal, and they are building a $15 billion development in that area. Why do we like that? Because that's revenue. Right? Think about it. Uh, when you think about innovation and economic transformation, and economic transformation often means you know, making sure that there's transportation access. The governor and mayor are fighting about this issue right now in terms of who pays for it. But if it's not accessible, it ain't going to grow. Right? If it's not accessible, it's not growing. <laughs> People can't get there easily. It ain't growing. It's one of the challenges of Industry City, quite frankly. Well, the ferry, ferry system's there. They have uh, the R train that runs out there. My nickname for the R train is Rarely, right? Um, it, it, it is not as accessible, but it's, it's, if, it, if, if you can't get there, it's, it's tough to grow. And one of the things is not only improving the subways, but, but expanding it. And that's some of the things that take place. Right in this area here, after 9-11, was the, you know, the whole rebirth of the, not only the World Trade Center, but lower Manhattan. And you can see some of the numbers. Right, 100 million square feet of commercial office space. And uh, East Manhattan, you, East, East uh, Midtown is also going to be seeing more growth. Why East Midtown? Because folks want to be around Grand Central, Penn Station. It's access to the suburbs, right, in and out. 
Hudson Square. This was the old print factory. All manufacturing, which is now going through a transformation. Media companies, advertising companies, design companies, communication companies, nearly 10 million square feet of space. How did it happen? It was rezoned. Rezoned to allow for commerce. In the past, it was just manufacturing. Downtown Brooklyn, which I, which I have already mentioned. Look at the vacancies, the commercial vacancy, which means they have run out of office space. And that's one of the reasons why you're seeing Industry City and other places like the Brooklyn Navy Yard grow, is people can't, they, they can't build it fast enough. And quite frankly, it's become um, more of a residential area than any, anyone ever expected. But look at the number of college students that I, that I mentioned. Look at the number of tech jobs that have grown there. Look at those numbers. Since 2000, downtown Brooklyn has added more than 9,000 new jobs and 500 new businesses in downtown Brooklyn alone. Those are old numbers, too. I mentioned Dumbo, number one in demand market. Everyone wants to take this picture, by the way. Mm -hmm. Right? Have, have anyone been down there? You've, have, you, have you taken this picture? Yep. <laughs> People are lining up in the streets. They're, they're lining up. They don't care about the, you know, the, it's like, I, I want to tell them, like, you know, that, those yellow cabs, they don't stop. <laughs> they don't stop, you know, but everyone's lining up for this picture in Dumbo of finding where do I take the place, you know, for, for, for the Manhattan Bridge. But just pause for a moment and look at the, the media entertainment companies that have grown. How did we grow our media companies? We provided incentives for companies to do business particularly um, you know, making films in New York and growing some of the places where you can end up making films. Brooklyn Tech Triangle, right? A lot of this is small companies. Small, added up, means big. 500 plus innovative companies. Priming that pump, bringing them together. Why is places like WeWork so popular, right? They got it. They figured it out. It's a whole different world. It's different. Right? All these companies and, and, and the growth of these companies. We're going to go out to the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Right? This is a little bit of marketing, folks. These three neighborhoods coming together. Right? When the guy who, who ran the downtown Brooklyn partnership came to me, I had a foot out the door and I had some money left over. I gave him $100,000 uh, for this recent this study to, he, he said, I'm going to brand this. I said, what are you branding it? I'm going to brand it the Brooklyn Tech Triangle. I said, you're out of your mind. It's not going to catch. He said, no, no, you, you, don't, you don't know what's happening here. You, you don't see the growth taking place. I said, I have a foot, foot out the door. I'm looking for my next job. But, you know, this place is you know, pretty much done. Downtown Brooklyn has grown tremendously. NYU just put another, I don't know, millions of dollars into their new facility there and their engineering school. And then now the Brooklyn Navy Yard, which you're seeing, you know, growing, growing tremendously. And they're working col collaboratively. Staten Island, we're seeing growth, not as much as Brooklyn, not as much as Manhattan, but opening up the waterfronts, a de another decommissioned military base, that is development. Same thing, Long Island City. Look at Long Island City, the number of hotels. Mm -hmm. 17 in planning. Why? Access to Midtown is, 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 is very accessible. But it's more than that. It's, it's, it's new office space being developed and, and grown. A lot of this stuff is still in place. And this is what you saw. This is a little bit dated, but it gives you a sense. And that's a little bit of the, right? probably a little lower than that, but that's, a, that's good. That's good. You could attract more companies. And you could see when you were out there how they were doing it, right? Right, it felt cool outside, right? The sitting areas, the way it was painted, the way it was laid out, some of the amenities on the ground floor in terms of, did you get to, did you get to do that? Did you get to walk around a little bit? Mm -hmm. right, it felt cool, right? All right. That's how they're. That's how. That's how they're. They're. They're doing this. Jamaica. 
has lagged behind for years. I never got it. Didn't understand it. So close to JFK Airport. It's finally taking off. Central Business District. One of the problems Jamaica faced was high crime, and it, it, it felt tired, right? You're starting to see a transformation in, in that area. I'm going to stop there, uh, because I, I, I think this, this will go on for forever. But I think in terms of the, the other key pieces, and I'll, I'll do this very, very quickly, the role, and then one of the reasons you're here, is one of the lessons that we heard loud and clear from the Bloomberg administration, and quite frankly, I, I, it's carried on through the de Blasio administration, a government has to play a role in a pro-business environment. And yes, you have to regulate businesses, but you also have to make sure that you're, you have policies to allow businesses to grow. In a city like this, before 2001, the city did not have an agency focused primarily on small business development. I had the honor to do that for 12 years and work with Pace and work with so many other places to help grow businesses and prime the pump. The other, and this is the difficulty one, that a lot of government leaders face is providing that infrastructure so the city grows. One of the reasons politicians, people in public office don't do this, is because they will never see the end result of another water tunnel being built or the completion of a bridge, right? That investment is so important and it often gets, gets kicked down the road, right? because it is a major investment. We're seeing it with our subway systems now, right? We've seen it with our public housing. I think you could say we've seen it with our energy infrastructure, when we've had blackouts in the past. If you don't make those investments and you wait for that rainy day, big mistake. And that is one of the key pieces. So when you're looking at a city, you even could take this to a neighborhood where you live. Are these types of things taking place in your neighborhood? Is the focus on this here clean, safe, interesting, inviting? Are you saying we're open for business? Are investments being made in the, in the you know, in this city? These are all key pieces to make things happen. What I wanted to do today is give you a good understanding of what has taken place in this city and some of the growth that has taken, particularly in small business and development. And my hope is that uh, that came through. Thank you very much for having me today.